In this video, we'll talk about the solar constant. The solar constant tells us how much energy, on average, a unit area of surface of the Earth receives from the Sun. So the Sun, as we've learned, radiates energy at a rate determined by Stefan Boltzmann law where T is somewhere around 6000 Kelvin and that is the radiance per unit area so the total radiance is, let's call it R, R of the Sun, is sigma t to the 4 times the surface area of the Sun, As. And the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So this would be sigma t to the 4 times 4 pi r s squared, where this rs here is the radius of the sun. Now, the question is, how much energy does Earth receive? And as the energy from the sun radiates outward, its intensity per unit area becomes less. So Earth is somewhere out here, cruising around the Sun at an orbit that is around 150 million kilometers. So by the time the energy from the Sun has reached the distance at which the Earth is, it has spread out a lot. And so the radiance is much reduced to that original F that we can compute from the energy of the sun, from the temperature of the sun. So the power that Earth receives per unit area is the total power emitted by the Sun, which we've computed here, divided by the total area of a sphere of the radius of the Earth's orbit. Let's call that radius SE, Sun Earth. So this area here is obviously 4 pi r s e squared. So the power per unit area that arrives at Earth's orbit, let's call that s. s is equal to sigma times t to the 4 times the area of the emitting body, the Sun, 4 pi r s squared, and divided by the total area of the sphere of the size of the orbit of the Earth, and that's 4 pi r s e squared. And you can see that the 4 pi cancel. So s just becomes sigma t to the 4 times radius of the Sun divided by radius of the sun's of the earth's orbit squared so we know the numbers needed to calculate s t is about 6000 kelvin the radius of the sun is about 0.7 million kilometers and the radius 
of the Earth's orbit is about 150 million kilometers. And that gives us a number for solar radiance per unit area of 1,362 watts per meter squared. And what's really remarkable here is that we can also measure the average power output from the sun that reaches Earth's orbit, and that is 1,368 watts per meter squared. So very close, the observed versus the theoretically calculated values. Now to get to actually the solar constant as it is typically defined, there's one more nuance. The power received at the Earth's orbit, that's uh, what we called S so far, is that for a cross-sectional area. But Earth is a sphere, and so that sphere has four times the area than Earth's cross-sectional area does. So in order to get the power per unit area on Earth's surface, we have to divide our S by a factor of four. And what we get then is 342 watts per meter squared. And this is what we typically refer to as the solar constant. Now I'd like to add one note here, and that is regarding variations in the solar constant. The sun has sunspots that cause most of its variation in energy output, and they undergo a, approximately an 11 year cycle from all we've been able to measure. The increased and decreased activity of these sunspots leads to a variation of about one watts per meter squared in our quantity S. We will later in this course see that increases in surface forcing due to greenhouse gas effects and anthropogenic emissions is much larger than the contribution from the variation in sunspots. So if somebody tells you that global warming is mostly due to variability in the energy output from the sun, you can tell them with good confidence that that is simply not true.